Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's session of the CBS Leadership Speaker Series. My name is Sarah Smuller, and I am a member of the class of 2021 of Columbia Business School and hold leadership positions across the school's General Management Association, Marketing Club, and Wine Society. It is my pleasure to officially welcome my fellow students, faculty members, staff, and esteemed panelists this evening. The CBS Leadership Speaker Series was established to offer students access to those at the very center of business, giving us an opportunity to learn from CEOs, founders, and distinguished business leaders. Tonight, we will hear from Dean McGlaris, Professor Michael Morris, and Board of Overseers member, Lee Hong Wang, Class of 99. After an introduction of our panelists by Dean McGlaris, Professor Morris will lead Lee Hong in conversation about her professional experience. Guests will then have a chance to participate in a live Q&A session. Please remember to use the raise your hand function to signal that you have a question. When it is your turn to speak, you will have the option to activate your microphone and or your video so that you can interact personally with the speakers. So it's without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Dean Costis Maglaris, um, the David and Lynn Silfen Professor of Business School at Columbia. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you for welcoming all of us uh, this evening and for your leadership of the General Management Association. Uh, it is it is great uh, opportunity for me to be joining all of you this evening, and it's my pleasure to introduce our wonderful speakers. Uh, and I look forward to the lively conversation. Uh, I'll I'll say a couple of words for Li Hong Wang and then for uh, Michael Morris, and then I'll. Let them uh, lead us uh, through this interesting uh, discussion. Li Hong, uh, as Sarah was mentioning earlier, graduated from our school in 1999 and is currently the chairwoman and CEO of Rise Education. Rise Education offers English language teaching and tutoring services in China. Li Hong is a member of our board of overseers uh, and she has more than 20 years worth of experience in finance uh, in the US and Asia. And prior to uh, rise, uh, Li Hong was at Bain Capital in uh, private equity in Asia, where she served as the managing director and oversaw all of the company's private equity activities in China. She also sat on the Asia Investment Committee. Li Hong has had uh, leadership positions in Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, uh, and Credit Suisse First Boston. Uh, is a good friend of our school, and uh, I look forward to everything you have to share with us. Uh, I have to warn you, I'm going to leave my office after I'm done, and I'm going to take my laptop downstairs because Nikki wanted to listen to everything that you're going to say, uh, and she says her, sends her regards. Now, Michael, uh, let me say a couple of words about Michael Morris. So, uh, Michael is the uh, Chavkin Chang Professor of Leadership in the Management Division. Many of you know Michael from his courses in leadership, teamwork, communication, negotiations, decision making. He teaches core and elective classes in the school. He won the Dean's Award for Innovation in the curriculum for creating not one, but two of the most popular elective courses, the Leader's Voice and the Patagonia Leadership Expedition which I am uh, profoundly jealous for not following and uh, participating in, but maybe I'll do uh, on one of the occasions. Uh, and uh, Professor Morris has also founded the school's leadership lab. He's, uh, he's a gem at the school, both as a profound educator and uh, 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 amazingly uh, impactful researcher. And uh, outside of academia, he consults um, with many uh, large corporations uh, across the, the globe. And uh, one of my favorites is that uh, he was part of the Dream Team, which was a small group of uh, social scientists that advised the Obama campaigns in 08 and 2012. Thank you both for participating, for taking the time. Uh, Li Hong in your morning and Michael in your evening. Uh, and I uh, look forward to this conversation. Thank you very, very much. Michael, to you. Thank you, uh, Costas. Um, I don't know whether to call you Dean Maglaris or Costas, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that, uh, that introduction was uh, too kind. You know, it can, can only go downhill from here. <laughs> um, well, Lehong, it's a real pleasure uh, to have this conversation with you. I don't believe we've met before, but 
I've followed your career since um, being um, aware of this event and I'm eager to hear the details. So um, thank you for, for coming, it's my privilege. Um, and I think we, you know, we have, um, we have a rough plan here. I think most people would want to hear about the stages of your career. Uh, it seems like you, you have, a, you know, a pre-MBA career and then post-MBA, you uh, had years in banking, years in private equity, and now running uh, an educational uh, startup company. So uh, you can really speak from a lot of different perspectives. Do you want to um, give us an overview of uh, your career for the people who um, don't know the trajectory of it? Sure, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Morris. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dean McLaris, to invite me for this uh, interesting panel. Um, Professor Morris, I hope to see you sometime uh, on campus. Yeah. Uh, but very good to connect uh, through uh, Zoom. Um, just very quickly, everyone uh, introduce myself. Uh, as Dean already mentioned, uh, I graduated from Columbia Business School in 1999. Before I joined Columbia Business School, I actually had a, a career with uh, government, uh, an organization called uh, China Securities Regulatory Commission equivalent to SEC in the US. Um, when I graduated from college, um, it was very early on uh, in China to start the stock market. Uh, I actually had the privilege to work with a group of uh, uh, government officials and returnees from the United States who studied uh, in, in, uh, in the US about securities market. Uh, so together we really, uh, I would say, um, uh, you know, build the stock market in China. So back then um, the, the job with government was very exciting because it, it's like the startup um, that you build the market, then you need to regulate the market. So we actually established uh, uh, a series of rules and regulations how to operate stock market securities exchange and how to supervise uh, market participants, including listed companies, including securities firms. So all that uh, uh, make me uh, had an overview about how the market really operates. Um, then before I, I enter business school, I already switched from government uh, to private sector, which is investment banking. Uh, when I work at uh, uh, the, the so-called CSRC, I actually encountered uh, a group of very brilliant people from invest banking, and they actually help uh, a Chinese company to raise capital. Uh, so look at uh, the whole country uh, just uh, transition from plant economy to market economy. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, Chinese companies need to raise funds. So I feel that like, uh, you know, after set up the market as a regulator, I really wanted to be part of the market player. So that's, that's really the first career switch. Uh, it was not very easy because I was the, uh, the so-called elite uh, among the young, younger people at CSRC uh, 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 took on pretty, um, I would say, you know, high positions and, and very good responsibilities. Uh, so that switch really um, was a, a decision uh, that I, I think I wanted more freedom. I, I want to be closer to the market. Uh, so after a year uh, uh, with the investment bank, I really feel, you know, I don't have the necessary tools and knowledge to be a good investment banker. Uh, investment banker is not just for uh, a single market in China. You actually need to understand the whole industry, and it, it started, you know, else, elsewhere uh, rather than China. So going to a business school, getting an MBA degree is a necess necessity to to to, to be, uh, you know, to 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 go on uh, on that career. Um, Later on, I'll talk about the impact on the MBA, MBA program. But after MBA, I continued the investment banking both in the US and in Asia. Uh, 
the two markets are very different. US is more advanced, more mature. Asia is emerging and everything you know, is new. So two years uh, in New York uh, with Credit Suisse really helped me to solidify the knowledge and uh, skills in the investment bank, banking business. And then after I, I, I returned to Asia, I do feel I have uh, more experience in the mature market, which, which is very uh, helpful for me to have a career in emerging markets. Uh, so the, uh, you know, I, 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 I've done banking in, in Credit Suisse and then JP Morgan and, and, and last uh, at Morgan Stanley. Uh, I do feel investment banking really helped me to grow from, um, uh, I would say, uh, amateur to, to a banker, a, a banker that can not only utilize uh, uh, professional or technical knowledge to help companies uh, when they need to raise funds or they they thinking about uh, merger acquisitions, but also soft skills, uh, including how you communicate with CEOs, CFOs at, at uh, um, different companies and convince them what is the best approach to access capital market. And when there is a downturn, you know, how do you think about uh, valuation? How do you um, raise fund uh, when, when market is uh, uh, tough? So all those soft skills also is part of the training I, I had uh, at Columbia Business School. Mm -hmm. So after uh, eight years uh, with the investment bank, I do feel investment banking uh, on one hand um, it is very, I would say essential for uh, Chinese companies or, or companies around the world uh, in the capital market. Uh, however, personally, I'm very interested in, in, uh, in operations and, and, and business evolution. Uh, so the chance to switch from banking, which is uh, what we call sales side, to buy side uh, as an investor working for Bain, it really excited me. Um, there's the second point is uh, also, you know, banking career, um, in my mind, it is very predictable predictable. Uh, switching to the investment side, I feel it opens a new world to me. Uh, I definitely need to learn much more on, uh, you know, how to run a business. How do you think about strategy? How do you really uh, conduct due diligence, make assessment of a business, and also make a decision on at what valuation to invest? After investment, how do you create more value so that you really can make returns on your investment. So that, that new world excited me, uh, also um, gave me a lot of challenge. Um, for example, uh, you do need to um, understand quickly about a new business, and then you need to be able to assess the attractiveness of that business. At the same time, business is run by people. So how to understand, uh, you know, the, the people within the company, whether you have uh, the right management team, uh, uh, the right management uh, structure, so that the, this team can lead uh, the company into the, you know, the next stage. All these assessments actually are very new. Lastly, as I mentioned, the Bain is a value, uh, uh, value very uh, focused on value add after investing. So how to, how to help the company to form the right strategy, to improve operations, and to have the right management structure and incentive, all those are, are very new to me. Um, so the, the career switch, uh, I think, uh, at one hand, really uh, provide me a new opportunity. At the same time, it, 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 it also uh, raised new challenges. Um, in fact, I think at Bain uh, really make me think more about my educa education uh, at, at, at Columbia Business School. It, it feels like if I knew, you know, what I, I was going to encounter, I, I would, uh, you know, had a, maybe a, a little bit different learning experience or focus at business school. Uh, so that that that's the kind of uh, the the private equity uh, uh, career. Uh, I've been with Bain for 13 and a half years. Really um, um, enjoyed a lot. Also experienced the whole change uh, in China from minority investment 
to control, to buy out transactions, and also economically from very high growth. Uh, basically, you uh, just uh, take the wave, uh, you know, into a, 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 a area that uh, China encountered a lot of uh, uh, challenges, uh, both macro and, and, and microly. Uh, after that, I, I feel you know investing is exciting. However, I feel like I wanted to uh, be even closer into real operations and the, the chance to be a CEO came out and it took me a year and a half to debate whether I should uh, become a CEO or I should continue my investment career. I feel um, I can come back to investing anytime. It, it, it is a lifelong career, but to be a CEO, uh, there is a, 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 a call that I, I wanted to answer at particular time. So that's why I, this year I switched to be a CEO, a whole different challenges. Of course, COVID-19 uh, uh, definitely, um, you know, had a, ha is still having a huge impact uh, globally uh, to everyone, everywhere, every business. So to be a CEO at this particular challenging time, uh, actually tested uh, my capability or accumulated uh, knowledge in the last, I would say, you know, 20, 30 years uh, that, you know, this can be a, another whole uh, hour to talk about. Uh, but, you know, uh, I will just stop here so that uh, uh, Professor Morris, we can continue, uh, you know, other topics uh, as you designed. Great. I'm, I'm sure Dean McLaurus is nodding his head about how taking on a, a, an executive position right when COVID hits, you know, creates a whole set of challenges. Um, it's, it's a time when we need the very best people uh, in the CEO positions and the dean positions. Um, I would say, you know, hearing your story, we're talking on Zoom now, but it's, it's like you've Zoomed in. You were a government <laughs> regulator and architect, and then you became an investment banker on the, on the sell side and then you then you uh, private equity where you're taking some ownership stake and you're you're engaged with management and and now uh, being the CEO so you really um, <clears throat> you've really t taken the full spectrum uh, uh, of, of perspectives on business I uh, I took a little note when you said um, that your experience at Bain caused you to think, if I had known in business school what I know now, I, I would do something differently. And what is what is it that you would do differently um, after your years in private equity and your years uh, as a CEO? Yeah, um, Professor Morris, uh, when uh, uh, when I was at the Columbia Business School, it was more than twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm sure the the structure of the uh, uh, courses are quite different now. For example, today we have more courses in entrepreneurship, in leadership program. Back then, uh, I think those are only emerging. Uh, and for students coming from China, I'm sure later on you'll talk about bamboo ceilings, yes. a, a culture that very much focused on academic. Um, so when, when I enter the school, I feel that I need to put more time uh, into the courses that give me skills Right. or so-called the hard skills. Um, so, you know, uh, of course, uh, accounting, finance, you know, statistics, and uh, anything involving in quantitative analysis, you know, where you know, I, I was very keen to, to get involved uh, and feel, you know, those courses will, will give me the skills necessary for me to counter the next uh, journey. Um, I, I think uh, back at school, uh, you know, I had two things that I did not um, fully explore uh, enough. One is um, uh, anything culture related. Uh, I do feel, you know, uh, we have a, a cluster, we have, a, a, you know, study groups. Those uh, so-called help me involve uh, getting into the knowing different people from different culture, different backgrounds. However, personally, I still, um, did not really, um, you know, kind of lean forward to uh, to to get more involved in in different, uh, you know, cultural events uh, or social events. 
So I always feel that I did not really utilize the two years fully enough. Um, therefore, when I work at the Bain, I still feel the culture difference, um, the Asian versus the American and the, the, the Asian uh, or the, you know, the Chinese versus the, the so-called the, uh, the Western culture. Uh, so when I communicate, I, I still don't know enough about uh, politics, you know, sports, you know, the, you know, the, the social element. Uh, so I feel I'm not 100% in a, a, a culture setting that is more Western. Uh, although I think I tried a lot, uh, but the, you need to accumulate, you know, a lot of uh, that experience and, and knowledge to be comfortable. So I do think, uh, you know, whoever uh, at school now, you know, try to explore New York, explore the host university, enjoy, you know, getting to know a lot of uh, different people. The second thing I, I, I feel uh, I did not take full advantage of the school uh, is to, uh, so-called learning uh, more or exercise more soft skills. I think uh, um, even back then we have uh, different uh, uh, clubs, different uh, classes, uh, talking about leadership, for example, talking about uh, um, negotiation uh, and all those soft skills actually um, will determine how far you can go or, you know, kind of a, the top how, how, how senior you can go. Um, of course, later on, I learned a lot uh, by myself uh, from my mentors, also uh, uh, the trainings Spain provided. However, if I were more prepared at school, I, I do think I, I, I can be, I would say I, I can wake up earlier uh, in my career. Um, so those are the two things I encourage, uh, 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 you know, fellow students to to be more open, to spend more time, and just to open up. Well, you've done uh, you've done very well, you know, in terms of rising to leadership. Uh, but but I I appreciate uh, what you're saying. I think it's hard when you um, when you're a, a student coming from China. I guess at the time uh, you um, you know you learning how universities in the United States work and everything is already a, a huge cultural learning task. And so uh, there may not be time to also learn about Latin America and also <laughs> learn about, you know, um, you know, every other thing that may be going on at the school. Um, we have a question that came in from one of the um, one of the uh, community members who's listening in, and I, I thought maybe I'd, I'd read it. I think that's my job to read the questions. Um, this person, it's I think Ming Ming Ching Zhang. If, if I, I don't know if I'm saying everything perfectly, but uh, the question is: Can you elaborate from your transition uh, from mature markets to emerging markets? What are the primary differences in emerging markets? What were the challenges? So I suppose this is, you know, within investment banking um, or within private equity, what are the differences when you are looking at it in the United States and looking at it in China? Okay. Um, I would say I had a short uh, career in the US at a junior position. So, uh, I can only uh, talk about my limited experience um, may not be the accurate or um, by any means to, to be, um, I would say holistic. Um, but uh, on, in general, uh, of course, mature market, uh, much more mature, meaning all market participants uh, have better understanding about how it functions. Uh, in emerging markets, uh, the first uh, challenge is uh, the clients you serve, uh, even the government that you uh, get involved, they, they have a very limited knowledge about financial markets, about how, how stock markets work. Uh, taking one very simple example, uh, uh, valuation right, at, at, at IPO, I think in the, in the US you have plenty of precedence how a company uh, get priced at IPO. 
and, and what is the uh, definition of underwriting, for example. In emerging markets, uh, uh, a lot of times uh, uh, the, the people you talk to, including the company you're dealing with, the government officials or um, uh, 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 other participants, participants may not be very familiar with uh, all the concept in the uh, financial markets. So a lot of education that you need to, uh, to give, that, that's number one. Number two is, uh, uh, I would say the, um, the so-called the, the, the deal structure. Uh, I think in the US, you, you normally don't really get much involved in structure deal. A company is formed. So, you know, the, the, in, the, in this system that it, it can naturally go public. In China, you may deal with, or other emerging markets, you may deal with the company need to restructure need to uh, reform into a, 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 a so-called shareholding uh, company to be ready for IPO. So all those restructure uh, need to trace back many years of uh, operational history. Uh, so the legal implication, accounting implication, and the even, even the human capital structure need to be changed. Uh, I would say more complex than uh, a company in the Western uh, uh, system. Uh, so you, you definitely need more knowledge in terms of uh, uh, legal uh, implication, sometimes, uh, you know, regulatory requirement uh, and accounting uh, um, uh, issues. So you, you just need to be, um, you cannot just be an expert in your own domain. So you need to extend your knowledge uh, beyond uh, so-called investment banking. The other thing is uh, uh, human side. I, I do think uh, in uh, uh, Western system, uh, it is a market oriented system. So people uh, accept uh, how market functions. In uh, an emerging market, um, there are social uh, psychological elements that are not mature enough or I wouldn't say mature, not ready to deal with uh, uh, challenges uh, rising in the free, so-called free market. So you do need to help them to prepare that. Um, give you one more example. In China, if you're uh, partially state-owned, the government uh, require you price the IPO or sell to the market no less than the net book value. Uh, so when market is very tough, sometimes you actually see a uh, comparable company trading at a discount of the book. Uh, you know, how do you explain, how do you deal with that type of challenges? Uh, it's, oh, uh, there are similarity. There are also a lot of, uh, um, I would say, market specific uh, uh, characteristics that you need to understand. Um, um, I wouldn't say it's all bad. Uh, in, in some way, if you, you have a, a better, uh, as I mentioned, uh, more knowledge beyond your domain, if you are a very good communicator, um, you are a problem solver, it, it may give you better opportunity to shine. Um, so this, this is, uh, I would say, um, difference and, and, and provide uh, uh, opportunities as, as well. Did your pre-MBA career in government give you insight about how to help a formerly state-owned enterprise legally restructure as well as financially restructure? Yeah, definitely helpful. Um, uh, however, I think uh, those so-called insight and knowledge will, um, will get obsolete uh, when market evolves. Um, the benefit uh, I, I had working for government is really understand the perspective uh, of where the government comes from. Uh, that really can help me to navigate the situation. And then uh, when I sit at the table, I know how to convince uh, the company or the government why we need to do things uh, a certain way. So the perspective is more important than the knowledge itself. Right, right. Um, well, that's, um, that's a fascinating, um, that's a fascinating uh, challenge, I think, um, that goes beyond the uh, ordinary investment banking. Was it also a factor in the private equity work 
Uh, did you take positions in companies that were partially state owned? Uh, Professor Morris, it's very interesting that uh, for my uh, investment career or private equity career, um, at least uh, uh, for now, uh, being Asia or being China hasn't really invested in a state-owned business. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we uh, of course, worked with a certain company to explore opportunities there. Mm -hmm. However, um, uh, I would say by also by intention, uh, we choose to invest in private-owned uh, companies. Yeah. Uh, we feel they um, are more uh, receptive to uh, private equity. Um, yeah. At the same time, we also feel the so-called uh, operational improvement uh, uh, strategies or the, the, the approach uh, we had at, at Bain are more su suitable for those private-owned companies. Yes. Um, government companies, they sometimes have different agenda. Uh, I think for, for private equity, the agenda is very simple uh, to make the company uh, uh, you know, bigger, stronger, more profitable, and therefore we can make more money. Very straightforward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. However, um, I think the state-owned companies or partially state-owned companies are more or less more uh, going towards market orientation as well, uh, at least some of them. Uh, so I'm sure other private equity firms uh, invest uh, into those companies. But for me, um, the last 13 and a half years at Bain, we we basically work with uh, private owned companies. Sure. Yeah, I can I can see the better, easier private equity case, you know, unless unless there's a specific moment in a market where there's an opportunity for growth and uh, uh, a formerly state owned companies can't can't make that transition as quickly uh, as they would otherwise. Um, yeah, well, yeah. If, if I can, I just want to add one more thing. Uh, for private equity investment, I think uh, uh, a lot of things are important. However, uh, one thing we specifically focus on is alignment with management. Therefore, as you can see that if you are uh, state-owned, you have different agenda. It's very mm -hmm. hard to, to have that alignment. Yeah. So that, that's also why we pretty much focus on private-owned uh, companies. It makes a lot of sense. Um, well, I, um, I we can come back. I'm fascinated with private equity. And I do some of it myself as a as a limited partner. So I'd love to talk more about that. But I want to I want to get to one point here where my uh, research interests come to bear upon your career, which is that two topics that I've worked on at times in my career are the so-called glass ceiling, which mm -hmm. uh, is the barrier to that, that women sometimes feel that they're punished for being assertive and punished for wanting to be self-promoting and to become a leader. And I've also more recently worked on the so-called bamboo ceiling, which is that right. at least in the North American context, uh, East Asians often feel that it's harder for them to fulfill the, you know, the styles that are expected of a leader. And I'm, I'm wondering how you've managed to crash through both the glass ceiling and the bamboo ceiling. What are your tips about that? Because I'm sure a lot of the, a lot of the people listening have one or another ceilings uh, that they may worry about. Yes, uh, I'm also fascinated by the topics that you, uh, in your research area, uh, because one, of course, I'm a Eastern Asian. I'm a Chinese, second, I'm a, a, a woman. Uh, so I would say um, I acknowledge that there are, uh, I would say um, if you use ceilings or certain barriers that we, we're facing every day, um, I, 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 I don't ignore that those uh, somehow, you know, visibly or invisibly exist. Um, but I also, at the same time, I do think uh, um, it lies, uh, you know, lies on myself or yourself to um, either break it or um, by not uh, impacted by it. So you kind of, uh, you know, you can you can 
weather through or going through those berries and, and break the ceilings. I know it's very difficult. Uh, for me, I'm still trying to learn how to, um, you know, be there as a leader. Um, but you're right, for example, uh, the profession I uh, entered uh, early on uh, investment banking, uh, although investment banking now in Asia uh, actually have a lot of uh, female leaders, uh, so much better than before, even maybe better than uh, investment banking in the US. Mm -hmm. However, private equity for sure, women, um, if I remember correctly, globally, women, uh, uh, you know, uh, professions in private equity is a single digit uh, and leadership position may be a low single digit. So in private equity world, um, you know, women uh, is a very small workforce uh, um, among uh, all. all. Um, for me, uh, at, managing directors when you were when you were at Bank? Exactly. Uh, at Bain Capital, uh, for private equity, uh, we had, uh, uh, I would say, um, a, a few uh, a female managing directors. Uh, on the deal side, I, I, I for a long time, uh, I, I, I've been the only one. Uh, of course, we have MDs from um, portfolio side, from uh, uh, IR side. Um, not not only at Bain, when I participate in uh, you know uh, due diligence sessions, working with uh, companies, most of most of the CEOs, uh, board members are are, are uh, male, um, and um, today as a CEO, e even say in education, which women are are a big uh, you know force, still a, a minority. Um, earlier, I, I I do feel that. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, you're you're there a little bit lonely, uh, but later on, I, I I think when you're focused on uh, professional uh, issues and professional topics, uh, I don't think you need to think about yourself as a woman. Uh, it, it's really uh, how you um, uh, maybe take it back. One is uh, you wanna you wanna be a profession. Uh, you you know you need to know what you're talking about, right? So you, you do need to be an uh, expert in your um, uh, domain. Uh, once you have that confidence, uh, once you're able to you know, share your uh, expertise, uh, I don't think they will look down only because you're a woman. Um, so number one is uh, you know, uh, as good as anyone else, don't think about a uh, uh, female or male. Uh, the second thing is really, uh, take advantage uh, 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 as a female, uh, give you an example, when I conduct due diligence or when I manage uh, my portfolio company, uh, I think the, you know, they tend to be less, um, uh, how to say, le less protective or less their dark. fence, yeah, towards a woman is lower. So wow. they actually um, talk more and uh, sometimes talk more the truth. So what you'll find out yeah. truth. Yeah. Um, so that this actually is an advantage. The the third thing. Um, sometimes I, I I talk to my uh, uh, female colleague is that you know you um, because you're a woman, uh, people tend not to um, you know how to say the they 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 need to show certain respect. Therefore, um, you actually uh, can speak up. Uh, more frankly, um, or you have a special tool to deal with conflict. Um, I think man to man, you know, the fight can be quite bad. And man to woman, I, I don't think, you know, this, this uh, uh, so called sometimes the eco fighting. Yes. Therefore, um, <laughs> therefore, um, I'm not saying, uh, you know, the you, 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 you should be less firm. I'm just saying that uh, you have a way to communicate so that you can be more in impactful, uh, easier to deal with a conflict. Uh, of course, the, the, the prerequisite requis 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 is that you're professional, you know what you're talking about, and you have a, a domain expertise that people respect you. Um, of course, uh, talking about the bam bamboo 
uh, ceiling or so-called the bamboo uh, uh, culture, uh, I do think uh, both uh, female and uh, Eastern Asia are uh, disadvantaged. Uh, there are a lot of uh, culture, historical issues uh, surrounded this, uh, uh, you know, so-called the 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 uh, this sp specific uh, group of people. Uh, for example, in in China, uh, a lot of uh, parents are still very dominant. Uh, so-called uh, uh, try to control children's uh, uh, you know direction, uh, give you a lot of uh, orders uh, and. So you, you, a lot of times, even the education system uh, provides a right answer. Um, all these actually, um, I would say, um, you know, kind of a, a cur curbed uh, the, the so-called freedom, uh, the explanation, uh, assertive. Um, therefore, uh, you know, these things still very much, um, I would say, um, you know, kind of uh, put a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, boundary or pressure uh, for Eastern Asia. I think Japanese and Chinese are very similar. Um, a lot of a lot of times we're not that open, uh, less deep, you know, involved in debate, uh, and uh, you know, less so as a sales. Person, I think Indian uh, people. I always say, you know, every Indian is a sales. Right, they they are very good at uh, selling themselves and 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 talk to people in a way that uh, attract attention. So I, I do agree. You, you know, uh, the the culture uh, issue, the historical reason, the family setup, all all had a a, a, a strong influence on how we um, you know perform or behave in front of uh, people. That's really insightful. Uh, really insightful answers. I really love the way you described how you you found power in the in the expectations that people have towards a woman. You know, so people expected you to be more empathetic, and they were more open with you as a result. You got better information. Uh, do you similarly find power in the expectations that people have of you as an East Asian? I mean, when you're in East Asia, this doesn't really come up. But I mean, in the United States context, where some East Asians struggle, uh, are, are you able to find what it is that people expect from East Asians and somehow use that as a source of power? Um, I, can, I can give an example. When, when Andrew Yang was running his uh, primary campaign, and I think, you know, I, I advise campaigns, I think he did a wonderful job uh, for the most part. Uh, people would ask him about this and, and he said, uh, well, he thinks voters trust him on the numbers uh, in his in his policy <laughs> stance, you know. So he was, you know, he was trying to find the positive in it, you know. Um, what's your experience with that? Yeah, later in my uh, uh, career, I actually definitely think uh, this is an advantage uh, for a couple of reasons. One is uh, when people, um, I would say, in some way, you you you. Um, take the um, disadvantage uh, and revert into advantage, uh, meaning sometimes uh, they don't expect me to, uh, you know, be very uh, 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 decisive or insightful, which actually I am. So once you give, um, uh, for example, you point out the, the, the problems of the CEO or the company, uh, you immediately get respect. Uh, of course, you need to do a lot of uh, work to understand uh, those those issues, why they face those issues. It's accumulative uh, uh, knowledge and experience. Uh, once you set up the, the image, you are professional. You actually know what's going on. You know, it, it is a power. They 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 need at the top. It, it is a very lonely job. If they they feel like you can be a partner, you you can be an advisor. Uh, or, or or trusted uh, insider, then you know the boundaries actually is much tighter. The second thing I think uh, normally women uh, can uh, I would say can be better is uh, empathy, right? Not only the sympathetic uh, 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 way, but empathy, meaning you can think uh, from the other side, the the the, the why they uh, uh, decided to do this 
type of uh, uh, things. Uh, when you have the empathy, it's like the game theory. You, you actually can play better uh, to lead the de decision or lead the results towards what you wanted to achieve. Uh, so this impact uh, actually is, is very important uh, in private equity job or as a CEO. You rally people, you uh, make them uh, taking, uh, you know, uh, uh, your view, N not, not by uh, brainwash them, is by really, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, um, how to say, make the, uh, you know, build the alignment, build the, the bridge. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, the reason I think I'm, I'm the, you know, get, get uh, uh, elected or selected to be the board of overseers at Columbia Business School, uh, because I, I do think uh, I represent uh, uh, woman, I represent uh, Chinese or uh, Eastern Asia. So the perspective that you can give is different from others. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is actually an asset, uh, a value that you uh, can provide. Therefore, um, uh, you know, it, 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 the, uh, you don't need to feel that you need to be the best or you need to be, uh, you know, top of the mountain. Uh, but the perspective perspective you have, you naturally brings in already is valuable. So with that, you feel much better to blend in, to, you know, get into the conversation uh, and, uh, you know, just be uh, natural and authentic. Uh, uh, you know, Professor Morris, uh, the, the two, two, two uh, theory that helped me a lot on leadership, one is uh, so-called authentic leadership. Right, be yourself and, and find uh, your own uh, way to be a leader. The second thing is uh, a book called uh, Why, I think it's called, Should Anyone, Why Should Anyone Let By You? So yeah. turn the so called, turn into the other side and think about why other people want to be led by you uh, actually make me think uh, more about how to be a leader. That's great. I, I love this idea that, you know, anyone who's who's um, has something different about their background, there's a way of construing that as a, as a real source of power that, you know, the insights you bring are, are going to be non-redundant, you know, with, with the insights of most of the other people in the room. So you, um, you, you can reconstrue it as a, as a way that everything that you have to say is more valuable to the group. Uh, I noticed uh, halfway through that last round that there was a box of uh, questions from the audience that uh, that I hadn't been looking at before. So I, I, if you don't mind, I'll ask you a few of these questions. Some of them are building on what you had uh, been talking about. One person asks, how does the use of soft skills that you mentioned differ in the U.S. and China? So do you do you code switch? Do you have a do you have a slightly different leadership style? And we might ask that about Hong Kong as well. You know, do you have a do you have a slightly different leadership style when you're in in China as opposed to Hong Kong as opposed to when you're in the United States? Wow, that's a very interesting question. Uh, personally, I, I actually feel I haven't figured out the uh, you know how to be a leader in the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, although I'm, I'm yeah, being on the I board of overseers is a you know that's a that's a pretty big leadership job. Uh, so, uh, uh, but I, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, asking about the question itself, uh, um, um, you know, um, already, um, uh, you know, uh, I would say already, um, um, what's the right word? Uh, give me the feeling that you are thinking uh, 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 definitely uh, in the right direction. Uh, I, I, I think more in general, uh, when we talk about diversity or, or uh, there is a cultural element, right? Uh, therefore, the leadership also need to be fit into the culture. Of course, the US, uh, you know, the Hong Kong and China are different in terms of a culture. Uh, so, for example, uh, how uh, I approach people, how I conduct the conversation uh, can be different in the U.S., sometimes in Hong Kong or in, in, in China. I think in, in U.S., um, we call people uh, uh, the first name basis, you know, even your, your boss. Uh, 
of course, we still call Professor Morris, but you know, uh, uh, in a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, 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 conversations, you you call people on the first uh, name basis. In, in China, it definitely uh, most of the time it's not on the first time basis. Uh, so that's the cultural elements that, that you do need to put yourself into the right position uh, so that your conversation can be more effective. Um, the, the second thing is uh, 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 directness or frankness. Uh, you know, the definition of that is different. Therefore, I think in China, you want to be more mellow in some way. Doesn't mean you don't make the point. It's just how you make the point. More polite. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, more politely. Sometimes uh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Um, you need to be more structured in your conversation. I, I think that thirdly, um, in, in China or in Eastern context, um, you do need to read between, uh, between the lines. Um, and, and so when you say it also, you need to, as I mentioned, structure the way that don't offend people directly. However, I, I think the messages are the same. The, the goals are the same. It, it, the only difference maybe is the approach is is different uh i uh i don't think i'm that um i'm still learning uh you know both ways in the u.s and in china uh and the generations are different as well uh therefore you know it's a constant constant challenge it's, it's yeah. also interesting journey right otherwise you're done right? <laughs> you're, you'll never be done so you know always uh, need something you knew that you need to to weather through or navigate you're fortunate to live in interesting times, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think the last 40 years, uh, it's like a, maybe the history of 200 years in the past. And then last six months, right? <laughs> Everything is different. Therefore, I don't think there is a particular uh, um, set of uh, rules uh, fixed. Uh, yeah. Therefore, you, you, you need to constantly uh, learn and, and, and uh, make changes accordingly. Mm -hmm. I think one topic that we were supposed to come to at the end is, you know, ad advice for professional advancement of, uh, of the listeners out there. Um, one person uh, asked a question about, what do you think about the buyout opportunities in China now, as opposed to the future? Um, and uh, somebody else asks, uh, have you encountered any trust issues? you know, related to uh, stories in China, like the Luckin coffee, you know, um, fiasco. Uh, right. I guess those are two very different questions. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I can actually combine this, those two questions. Uh, I, I do think uh, uh, in the world of uh, making money, uh, there's there are always people uh, too aggressive or fraudulence. Therefore, um, part of the, our work as a private equity investor is to find out the truth and also motivation. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, the team at Bain, uh, we, uh, I would say uh, uh, one thing we are proud of is uh, that we uh, never got into uh, those fraudulent situation. Uh, lucky in China, of course, uh, is uh, in some way uh, people feel, uh, uh, you know, fascinated and uh, in, in some way um, maybe very disappointed. However, uh, Professor Morris, you know, if we talk about Enron, right, back to uh, 90s, uh, it's very similar. So when, when money is involved, uh, you always need to have a high alert. Uh, how they make money, whether it's sustainable, uh, you know, uh, you know, if there's there's something called too good, too good to be true. Oftentimes it is too good to be true. Um, then buyouts uh, opportunities in China, it's like a 20, 30 years uh, ago in the US. I think a buyout uh, only started now. Therefore, going forward, there will be more opportunities in the buyout space in, in China. However, I, I, I uh, also emphasize, uh, it doesn't mean that it's easier to make money if you're taking control. Uh, it actually means more responsibilities and uh, you know, uh, hard skills and soft skills. Uh, overall, you need to um, raise your game uh, to play in the buyout world. Yeah, I can imagine it's a more challenging process. 
um, especially for people who aren't from China and aren't familiar with all of the context of business in China uh, to, to engage in a, in a leveraged buyout. Um, anything else about the current environment? Uh, how does, you know, how, what's your view of how this pandemic we're experiencing, how, how this should experience, how this should affect current MBA students? What should they be, what should they be looking at? What should they be uh, doing to respond to the situation? Yeah, um, uh, maybe from two aspects. One is, uh, I know it is very tough for uh, uh, students uh, right now uh, or people graduating from school. Uh, however, I would say um, we had a you know 1998 Asian crisis. Mm -hmm. Then we had a 2003 uh, economic downturn. Uh, at that time, then 2008, right? Global uh, financial crisis. Uh, every single time people feel that I won't have a future, I will never be able to make more money than before. Uh, the, the, the history, now already history proof it's not true. Therefore, uh, I, I do think you, 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 everyone uh, should, take, should take, I would say uh, this precious time to improve yourself and be ready when the next opportunity uh, comes out and next opportunity will come out. Uh, that's number one. Number two is um, I, I, I uh, gave the speech to my employees or, or my fellow uh, colleagues. Wow. Uh, in, in this special time, uh, I know it's hard. However, uh, if you know, 30, 40 years um, uh, uh, from now, look back, I'm very sure this will be the moment of your life, the moment of your career, uh, and the moment of um, maybe your family. So I would say, you know, it's hard uh, on one hand. On the other hand, um, it, it is also historical. Uh, therefore, you know, live in it uh, and, and try to live uh, as good as you can. Um, be, be confident, uh, as I mentioned, if you continue to improve yourself, the next opportunity will come out uh, very soon. Well, that's a, thank you for that optimistic uh, wisdom. It's, it's inspiring. <laughs> uh, you've, you've been through a couple of these crises before, so you can speak with uh, authority about that. I see Sarah has reappeared here on the screen. Hi, uh, Sarah. Mute. Uh, we can hear you. Uh, turn on your mute. Turn off. Back when we hear from the Board of Overseers member and Chairman and CEO of Fountain Best Partners, Frank Tang from the class of 94. Thank you so much.